So we are continuing the first neural network notebook on PyTorch. Um, I just restarted the video, continuing from last time. I'm just going to run these uh, cells one at a time just to catch up. I suppose uh, we've run these things already. Um, and, and this is uh, until where we had run, I believe. Um, we uh, gave it an input 1 comma 1 comma 32 comma 32 four dimensional array one stands for mini batch number of images this one stands for how many channels in the image and these two uh, stand for the number of pixels um, height versus width I suppose um, and then we get 10 numbers up um, once you get those 10 numbers we can compute um, some kind of difference between those 10 numbers and some um, ground truth data that you have. So usually we're comparing the output of the neural network to some output that is present in our data, which could be, for instance, uh, one hot coded um, um, uh, class or something else, really. Uh, the 10 numbers could be any number of things, right? Uh, so here we have the same output for the input, which is 10 numbers, and then we say target. This is just meant to be an example. So uh, this is target, meaning the this is the official correct output in the data. It's just been generated randomly uh, as uh, rand n of 10. And because we are trying to compare this output and this target, they need to be the same size. So this um, 10 uh, element one dimensional array is being reshaped into a one comma ten array um, and which is the same size as this output so it says output blah 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 one comma ten and uh, there is a command or or there is a uh, uh, function called mean squared error which basically takes the uh, difference between the output and the target and um, squares it and takes the mean of it um, and that's what uh, this is doing. So you say criterion equals this function. So we've created basically a method which can operate on output comma target and it gives this last, which is the mean squared error between output and the target. Okay. And if you print that, you get 1.46 something. Okay. Um, notice that this already has this grad function and, and uh, it says that the last function um, that uh, produced this uh, loss function is MSC loss backward. So that's this function. Uh, we can run this, I've already run this clearly, uh, and sort of um, essentially see what functions in sequence led to uh, this uh, final output last. When you say last.grad function, it tells us what the latest function that produced last was. And then when you go in dot next functions 0, 0, it gives you uh, what the very previous function was and so on and so forth. This is not, again, something you would actually use for anything. This is just visualizing some internal process. Okay. Here, um, what we are doing in this cell, um, now we are actually ready to do back propagation. In other words, find the derivative of the uh, last function with respect to all the inputs, um, well, specifically all the parameters in the neural network. The inputs themselves are fixed. They're just going to be some images. Um, the output is going to be the consequence of the input. And then there's a target, and then there's a last function. We want the derivative of the last function with respect to uh, all the parameters in the neural network, okay? Um, so what we're doing here is first saying, so net is the neural network recall, and we are saying net dot zero underscore grad. Basically, we're running that. Uh, and what it does is zero is the gradient of all the parameters, okay? So, and then if you print con1.bias.grad before backward, um, 
they don't even um, well it'll say none okay and then uh, if you uh, do last that backward and then print uh, that gradient again it will actually say what the gradient is so this number uh, or these this matrix is the gradient of the last function namely the mean square error with respect to um, the bias terms in the convolutional layer the first convolutional layer okay let me run this thing and this none might change because I've previously run this thing um, well it's still none because I think we are setting zeroing everything out okay uh, because we've zeroed everything out looks like uh, it just got like it's eliminated uh, those gradients uh, and uh, and then once you do the back propagation in other words asking um, PyTorch to actually propagate the derivatives with this dot backward um, all the parameters in um, the neural network namely all the weights and biases um, sort of get these uh, gradient values we can check what else have these things so if you go net.com two dot um, it's got all these things it also has a bias and then uh, it also has a grad so you can print that if you want Uh, we can print, uh, recall there was a fully connected layer, fc1 dot, um, there's a bias, there's also probably weights, weight dot grad, okay. Ah, our usual error of trying to do back propagation all over again um if we want to do run that um run this back propagation again we have to redefine the last uh function so let me do that this is where we are defining the last function defined it run this thing you didn't need to run this thing and then if you run this thing now it gives us okay this thing is the um, derivative of the last function with respect to the bias term um, of the first convolutional layer. This is the derivative of the last function with respect to the bias term in the second convolutional layer. And this matrix, which is a large matrix, there's a dot, dot, dot here, is the um, gradient of the last function with respect to the weights in the fully connected layer one. So if you just go back and look up what fully connected layer one has, it's got a lot of parameters 16 times 16 times 16 times 6 times 6 is the input and the output is 120 it's a huge matrix with uh, these many rows and these many columns or vice versa right so very large matrix and that's why there's a dot 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 here okay it's going to be the derivative with respect to each one of those elements okay so we've now successfully back propagated the uh, gradient with respect to all the parameters in the neural network and they're all stored in their respective uh, parameter sort of placeholders um, and then uh, i think the final cell just says that uh, we can do stochastic gradient descent by now that we have the gradient we can um, say weight equals weight minus learning rate times gradient and keep doing that so this doesn't do much. Um, they have a function called sgd, optum.sgd. There is a package called optum, optimization, uh, which implements um, uh, machine learning optimization algorithms like stochastic gradient descent and a variety of other things. And uh, anyway, this is not actually running the code because we don't really have any real data and so on. We just have fake data to just demonstrate the um, uh, various functions but they're just showing in principle that you could at every step set to zero all the gradients compute the output for the new inputs or the new mini batch 
evaluate the loss function, which might be mean square error, find all the gradients using back propagation, and then use optimizer.step, which does the um, update. Okay. So let's end that video here, and then the next um, little video is going to finally talk about training a classifier.